Hello hackers! Welcome to the kernel security module of Phone College. I am Jan and today we're going to be talking about uh, intricacies of shellcode in the Linux kernel. All right, so far in this course, you've done a lot of user space stuff. You've written a lot of user space shellcode. Some of it might look like what you see on the screen. That's a simple open, read, write, and then exit cleanly shellcode that might be used throughout the course to uh, um, achieve your goals once you have shellcode execution to leak the flag. Now, this user space shellcode won't work if it is exactly verbatim executed into in the kernel. Why not? Well, because it uses system calls. And if you recall way back when from the program interaction module, um, I said that system calls are an interface for user space code to interact with a kernel that it's running under the supervision of. As such, when a syscall instruction happens and control flow redirects into the syscall entry function inside the kernel, the kernel assumes that it is coming from user space, that control had been in user space, execution had been in user space, and then it moved into the kernel. This assumption uh, leads the kernel to make certain actions which are invalid if code execution is coming from kernel space. So if you trigger a system call from kernel space, the kernel will crash. It's actually shockingly hard to create a functional and secure syscall interface that can also be triggered from inside the kernel. That's just not what a syscall is for. So if you do a syscall in your kernel space shellcode, things will not work very well at all. In fact, your kernel will crash. Or really, that kernel thread will crash and to your process, it'll look like your syscall instruction triggered a segmentation fault, which under normal circumstances should never happen. So what do you do? Well, what you do is leverage the fact that you are executing code inside the kernel. You are the kernel. That's an incredible amount of power. And you can do anything you want to do by using kernel APIs to do it. What you want to do varies. If you want to escalate privileges, of course, as discussed in uh, prior lectures, you will want to execute the prepare kernel cred and the commit creds kernel functions. If you want to escape from seccomp, you'll want to mangle the uh, thread info security flags or the thread info flags in general of your uh, current uh, tasks uh, structure. If you um, want to run a command in user space, you want to call the run CMD kernel API, right? None of these involve system calls. They require you to either find the current task struct offset um, and or find the current task struct and figure out how to offset into it properly and modify it properly or call these API functions listed there, right? None of them require or can be done with system calls. Kernel APIs are normal functions. What you do to call a kernel API is you trigger the call instruction, not the syscall instruction. Um, but what do you call? If I try to make a uh, shellcode here with just a very simple um, call, a call of prepare kernel creds with an argument of zero, under the hood, what goes wrong is that GCC, when it compiles this shellcode, when it assembles the shellcode, it creates a uh, executable with a relocation. And that relocation basically means it doesn't know where prepare kernel creds is, what the what it is, right? Of course, if this was puts, it might be fine. It actually wouldn't be fine, but there are things you could do to make it fine um, in an executable not in shellcode. In shellcode, you can't just call a function by its name. Shellcode, when it runs, it runs in memory on the, um, in the context of ones and zeros. You need to know where a function is to call it. So how do you find where the function is? Well, it varies based on whether KASLR is on or off. If KASLR is off, well, you can parse a file that the kernel provides called proc chaos sims, as long as your root, actually more specifically, as long as you have certain privileges 
that you don't have inside the containerized infrastructure of phone college, but you do inside the vulnerable VMs and on your own Linux box. If you identify an identical system, ideally the same hardware, same um, um, kernel version, uh, et cetera, et cetera, configuration and so on. And this is, for example, the uh, Praxis mode for a challenge in Pwn College. You can um, use the proc hey all sims uh, file to read out the address where in, uh, in memory where certain uh, kernel API functions are located, anything that the kernel exports. Um, if KSLR is on, you have a bigger problem. And but it's analogous to the problem of KSLR is on in the real world and user space, right? You need to load or leak an address, and based on that address, you'll need to compute uh, based on an offset of what you leaked and what you're interested in. You'll need to compute the address of what you're interested in. But um, the real world systems will have KSLR on. It's also important to practice and learn with KSLR off which you'll be able to do in this module. So let's say you found a, uh, the location of a kernel, excuse me, a kernel API. What next? Well, next you have to call it, right? How do you call it? Well, you don't use the syscall instruction. You use the call instruction. Kernel APIs are normal functions. Unfortunately, a normal call instruction takes a relative 32 bit offset and it, it shifts execution by that amount and goes there. If you know where your shellcode is and it's within 32 bits uh, difference of the function you want, you could use a call instruction, but it's a giant pain in the butt. If you know where your, uh, uh, your target is and you have its absolute location in memory, you can just make an absolute call. An absolute call has to be indirect. It has to go through a register and, and you, you can accomplish it by putting the address you want to jump to into a register and then calling that register, which calls uh, the function at the address that the register is pointing to. Uh, and you can see over here what happens if I try to assemble a call to this giant address. This says operand type mismatch for call. That basically means, hey, this is too big. It won't fit into uh, 32 bits. And even if it did, I provided an absolute address, but what call really takes is a relative address. Sometimes this is useful. Sometimes you might know where your shellcode is in relation to the kernel, but you don't know the absolute uh, addresses of either. But um, this isn't the case, for example, with KSLR off um, or in cases where you know the absolute address of a kernel API function. Um, and so here is our normal uh, uh, indirect absolute jump um, and it assembles happily and you can use that in your shellcode to jump to this address. This is a nonsensical address, of course, that you would replace with your address of the kernel API you're interested in calling. All right, so we are able to call kernel APIs, right? That'll let us execute run command, let us execute prepare kernel cred, commit cred, everything. You're, you're good to go except for with seccomp. Escaping seccomp is tricky. It requires finding and modifying structures uh, that the kernel keeps track of for the current process, the current stacked, uh, the current task struct. Luckily, the kernel points to this struct because it also needs to find it by using the GS segment register. Now, these segment registers are a little tricky to interact with. They're harder to interact with than uh, general purpose registers like uh, RDI and RSI. Um, and of course, in C, you don't have to think about any of this. You just use the current variable. It's, it's, it's a magic macro inside the kernel that finds you the current task struct. But how do you do that in your shellcode? Well, you can crawl through kernel source code, try to understand how the kernel does it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's not going to be good for, 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 for your sanity. What is better for your sanity is let the compiler do the hard work. Literally, write what you want to do in C, what you want your shellcode to end up doing. Write that in C, build it for the kernel that you want to attack, and 
uh, this can be done in our Pwn College infrastructure very easily using the VM build command and reverse engineer that to see how these actions translate into assembly and then re-implement that assembly in your shell code. So on the right here, I do two things. One is I figure out how to get the address of the current thread info, uh, the current structs, uh, the current task structs, thread info flags um, um, variable, the address of that, and how to get the value of this TIFF seccomp, the offset into the flags that is the one bit that says that seccomp is on or off. And uh, I, I write this minimized kernel module. I build it super easily in our infrastructure, but you can, of course, build this outside of the infrastructure as well. And I uh, disassemble the result to see what happens. And here is the relevant thing. This moves into REX, the return value of this function, uh, an offset of zero from the global, from the GS, the global segment register. And this is something that you can just copy into your shellcode. This is valid x86 assembly that will work. This is the value of the uh, offset of the seccomp flag. Again, that is something that is specific to the version of the kernel that I built this for, but the compiler figured it out for me. I didn't have to crawl through source code. And I can take that, put it together, and build my shellcode. Or if you're even lazier, which is great, you can put it together in C, assemble it, and extract it. One caveat. For calling kernel um, APIs, this won't work. Uh, what this will do is create uh, relocations, which the loader will um, uh, resolve when the kernel's module loader, when that kernel module is loaded. So it will basically say, hey, I'm going to call something. I honestly have no idea what it is. It'll literally do call zero, which will disassemble to calling the next instruction. At load time, it'll say, okay, okay, that's going to be calling um, prepare kernel cred or whatever, right? But in, in the assembly, it won't make any sense. Um, this is actually why it's a little tricky to uh, disassemble kernel modules in uh, tools that aren't prepared for these sort of tricks, um, uh, which is actually most of the reversing tools. All right. So... That's how you figure out. Um, uh, sorry, that's how you figure out the addresses and the layouts of structures. Please just try to use C first, and then see what it does, and then steal that. Now, you know how to call kernel APIs. You know how to modify kernel data structures and find them, etc. You're basically done. What could still go wrong? Well, oftentimes you need to, in kernel exploitation, user space exploitation, you can hit your shell code, it prints out the flag, you don't care what happens afterwards. In kernel space, you do, if it's a privilege escalation and it just escalates the current process by calling commit cred, uh, commit creds, prepare kernel cred zero, that'll make the current process root. If then your shell code crashes, the current process will crash before you can use it to read the flag. So you have to have your kernel shellcode exit cleanly. That's critical. Um, a common example, if you hijack a function call uh, pointer that the kernel called, make your shellcode act like a function, make it return afterwards. And that's all. If it cleans up, it, if it makes sure its stack is, is, is uh, not messed up and then cleans up properly, the kernel can continue execution. Oftentimes, uh, this is, this actually is probably all you need for um, these challenges, but in, in the general case, fixing up the environment might be more and more advanced. Um, but the point is for kernel exploitation, you need to make sure that the system survives after your shell code or whatever your payload is, is done, uh, taking the actions that it's taking. All right. Finally, we get to debugging. Your shell code isn't going to work on the first shot. That's fine. That's not a problem. How do you debug it? Well, kernel exploits are a little tricky. Most kernel exploits 
because most kernel vulnerabilities are triggerable from the inside, from user space, not from like the network, let's say. But most attacks will have a user space component. That user space component will inject the payload into the kernel to trigger the bug. So what do you debug? If you run GDB on your user space attack component, uh, your attack program inside the VM, that's nice and easy. It'll have all the symbols of your attack program, etc. But it leaves you completely, completely blind as to what the kernel is doing. So you can't single step through system calls, into system calls, into the handlers, into the vulnerable kernel code. And as I mentioned before, the typical outcome is from the outside, from the inside, from, from um, inside GDB debugging your uh, user space component, it'll look like, for example, the syscall instruction sec faulted or sig illed or sig killed or whatever, however it, 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 it gets uh, broken. So what you have to do is attach to QEMU itself outside of GDB to debug your kernel. Now, of course, if you aren't running a QEMU, if you're running in uh, actual normal hardware, you might have to attach using a dedicated hardware debugger in an embedded device, for example. But here, uh, in the practice challenges of this module, you'll be running the kernel inside QEMU. And in the Pwn College Dojo, there's a very handy VM debug command that you can run and it'll attach to the running uh, kernel. Now, it's harder to debug the user space component. Uh, you don't have the symbols of your user, user space component, although you do have the symbols of your kernel, which is helpful. But without the symbols of your user space component, there's a little bit of a headache in uh, breaking at parts of your user space component uh, that you would expect. My advice, turn off position independent code in your user space attack component, which you will control, and break um, in the now known addresses uh, for your attack so that in GDB, you can break there and step your way into the kernel and observe the um, uh, bugs being triggered and your exploit failing so that you can fix it. All right, TLDR here, run GDB outside of the virtual machine, not inside of the virtual machine. Hopefully that was useful, a useful quick dive into the different um, tricks that you will need up your sleeve to successfully hack the kernel, to successfully execute shellcode that does something in the kernel, does something productive. Um, you'll get plenty of uh, practice in our modules, uh, and our challenges for this module, and of course, in the rest of Pwn College. Good luck.